In my last video, I talked about how GPT-3 was able to figure out an NLP task like tokenization pretty easily. Tokenization was something I'd been interested in for a while because in the past I built a search engine called AtSign. One task in the field of information retrieval, similar to NLP, information retrieval is a fancy way of mostly talking about search engines. Uh, one task that's critical for information retrieval is splitting paragraphs into their respective engrams. Wikipedia defines an engram as a contiguous sequence of n items from a given sample of text or speech. And so you can see here, uh, we start off with the sentence, this is big data AI book. And so the bigram takes, takes it and turns it into this is, is big, big data, data AI, AI book. And so it's splitting the words into basically pairs. And that's what's called a bigram. And a trigram is, is the version, same version of that, same idea, but with three. Uh, splitting them, them up this way is critical for keyword-based web search engines like AdSign or Google to help them better match users with keyword-based results that match with their keyword-based questions. Um, so you might enter a search as a bigram and the results would need to also be bigram in order for you to get back results that actually match. Uh, because for example, the keyword mobile, uh, that's one keyword, it will have different results. The bigram of mobile phone will have different results. Mobile phone is completely different set of results than mobile. So that's why it's important for search engines. That's why they need ngram analysis. Uh, I found a really fast example a long time ago on Stack Overflow of how to do it just with built-in Python functions. It seems pretty good to me. Uh, but I wondered if GPT-3 could also help us with bigram analysis generation. Uh, with this in mind, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my findings. I started by using the same sentences like my last video, not a lot of originality here, and giving it a single example of the bigram generation task. Then I asked it to, to basically split up and generate the bigrams for the same very popular but also dramatic Drake lyric. So on the left is my example that I gave it, you know, God is great, I want a lottery, and below it under output you can see that that's the ngram, the bigram version of that sentence. On the right I gave it the sentence uh, Kiki, do you love me? And this is its attempt, keyword attempt, at trying to generate bigrams only with a single example. Now, not to be harsh, this is a pretty good single example, but I think GPT-3 and OpenAI, this is just another level. Sometimes I feel like I'm even too lazy to give it two, but <laughs> this is what it is even with one. Um, it's technically wrong. I think I was too optimistic. So I gave it a second example. I know it's, it's so much work, right? And I tried again. Uh, so I just gave it the Kiki, do you love me example, the same one back to it. Uh, and then I asked it to split up the sentence, sure, breakfast is on you though. And sure enough, it worked. And notice too, uh, part of the challenge of uh, bigram analysis and developing these engrams is typically you remove punctuation. And I never told GPT-3 uh, explicitly to remove punctuation, but notice it can tell just from my examples that punctuation should probably be removed. Again, it's just shocking how well it worked with only two examples. I then gave it a new harder sentence just to be on the safe side because I didn't want to just publish a video and say, wow, GPT-3 can do it <laughs> just right out of the box. Uh, and it didn't like it as much. Uh, I just randomly uh, found some phrase or some sentence or paragraph from a random article about Google about how they're getting rid of their don't be evil policy. And the output it gave me uh, was not good. And I suspected it's the same thing, I guess, as my last video, uh, where you see where it says don't be evil in, in the input we gave it. I think the quotes were really bothering it. And so I gave it one more example, just like the last video and I showed it essentially how to escape the single quotes that are randomly in the sentence. Uh, and you can see in the output uh, that it it did a good job. Like it generally, it, it handled the quoting, the quotes well, most of them are bigrams. However, I would give this uh, less of a high score because it did put in a trigram, tri trigram, you see where it says to the resignation, 
to the resignation, and also it left a period at the end for Motto. Um, and so maybe this is one of the downsides is um, it sort of is not obeying the examples that I gave it, although I only gave it two and I wasn't explicit about how it should act. Maybe with more it would be perfect, but from what I'm seeing now, these two, I would say this is maybe 80-85% of the way there. It's not perfect n-gram, bigram generation and analysis. For the most part, I was still blown away. GPT-3 was able to perform the bigram generation with a few examples right out of the box. However, I don't think what I have now is capable of working at a production scale. Uh, so far, I don't have confidence it can work well on a large corpus of text. Like I mentioned in my last video, text from the web is really diverse. It's from 1995. It has iframes within iframes. It's in many languages and encoding standards. It has emojis. Some of the images are broken. Some of the code is written poorly. There's just a bunch of reasons. Um, I also still think Python's basic libraries, uh, like the example I included, that code snippet, I think it would probably still be faster, and I think it mostly does a good job, depending upon how much poor n-gram generation and analysis is affecting the quality of your search results. But I think that question is so specific, <laughs> I doubt a lot of people are even there that they need to assess the quality of their n-grams. Um, also, I want to just say a common challenge of n-gram analysis is you filter out common stop words. Stop words are words like the, and, should, to, and we're not doing that here. And I don't have confidence GPT-3 would be able to handle it reliably without at least a fair amount of examples, although I'd love to be proven wrong. The challenge was also just doing that in multiple languages, right? But anyways, I'd love to see if there's, if there's further research, if I have time for a video or if somebody else wants to try it out and share in the comments or make a follow-up video, absolutely, you should go for it. I'd love to learn too. Nonetheless, props to OpenAI for creating an impressive model and API through GPT-3. It's worth noting, we might not even need n-grams in the future while building search engines and creating our search engine index because GPT-3 can already just take in data and answer natural language questions that users might have. Like in my earlier video, I just showed somebody basically made like a Google web search engine just with GPT-3 where you can just ask it questions like, uh, who's the author of this book? And it will tell them <laughs> without, you know, any search index, without explicitly being trained to do that. So we might not even need to focus on engrams anymore, but it's still a pretty cool use case of GPT-3, which is why I thought I'd share. Over the next few days, I'm gonna continue sharing different capabilities I've discovered for GPT-3 and all of my findings publicly for you guys. If you're interested in following along on my journey, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching.